fun another day another vlog and today i'm here with this book that was overdue at the library in my very first vlog so i had to return it i got it back so i thought i should talk about it before i forget about it it's uh future proof nine rules for humans in an age of automation by kevin roos so kevin writes for the new york times on technology so this is his you know bread and butter every day uh that's what he writes about and the book is sort of a distillation i guess of what uh he has uh, researched and uh, things that we wonder uh, you know it doesn't matter what kind of office job you have if you are working in an office uh, or even outside uh, you worry that computers or machines could come and take away your job so anyway I was talking to a colleague on you know technology and how things could be made efficient at the office and uh, he does marketing work he recommended well why don't you check out this book uh, quite recent book uh, at that time anyway uh, this is late 2021 so I eventually I got around finishing it and what I realized is that things that we wonder about in 2022 are similar to things that people 2000 years ago uh, were worried about in a different context so Kevin talks about or mentions Aristotle uh, over 2000 years ago wondering what could machines do machines could impact the demand for slaves and uh, then we had Luddites in 1928 uh, Kevin says that New York Times was writing about how electricity in factories could make manual labor obsolete he hasn't done that people still work at the factory so the point I uh, took I took away from that is that people have worried about computers in different contexts there were analog things machines now we have digital uh, apps softwares that can sort of augment or replace a lot of human jobs so anyway what I realized is that it's, this is not a new concern that people living in 21st century are, 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 should be concerned with uh, philosophers thinkers uh, labor union activists have uh, thought about this have been concerned about it in the past so it was consoling to hear that you know we aren't the first ones uh, to worry about this uh, there's a long history behind it uh, there were two rules I should say that really resonated with me uh, there's the first one it's hard to read uh, but I'll read it it says be surprise surprising social and scarce and then there's another one called uh, leave handprints so those ones really spoke to me and uh, the gist of it is this that computers are good in playing games chess you know IBM built a computer many years ago able to beat the grandmaster uh, so yes computers have very high horsepower in terms of computational powers but in terms of relating to others they're not quite there yet so Kevin talks about how lawyers if you are a lawyer you're worried about uh, softwares writing contracts much faster much efficiently uh, need not worry Kevin says that you know lawyers may become legal therapists as time goes on we can outsource the grunt work to computers and then there's still the relationship building trying to figure out human needs human wants and how can we solve those so uh, that's what Kevin says about uh, lawyers or even doctors he says that that it'll be your bedside manner that would matter more than knowing all the recent protocols for a particular uh, disease or treatment protocol uh, so it was quite consoling to hear that yes there may be less jobs but it will have a more human element that we can outsource the grunt work to computers um, leave handprints that had a very interesting story about in uh, in Japan in 1966 uh, there being uh, 18 year old uh, Mitsuru Kawai K-A-W-A-I not sure how to pronounce it but I I found him after I read about him in the book I googled him he, he has a profile on Toyota's website so I'll put a link uh, to that but 1966 uh, Mitsuru starts his apprenticeship at the Toyota Technical School uh, to learn about every aspect of manufacturing a car and around that time uh, in 1960s there was a lot of movement of uh, automation General Motors had a big machine that would automate 
aspects of uh, building a car. So there was a lot of uh, unrest about what could com machines and automation could mean for uh, those stable jobs, manufacturing jobs. And Mitsuru uh, and his colleagues sort of uh, were indispensable. Mitsuru, instead of fearing the machines, he worked on craftsmanship. And there's a word uh, Kevin writes here in Japanese, monozukori. I don't know how to pronounce it, but the spelling in italicized, the italicized word is M-O-N-O-Z-U-K-U-R-I. Anyway, so Mitsuru Kawai focused on craftsmanship instead of saying, hey, I can outwork the machines or robots. He developed over the years a sixth sense so that he was able to tell from uh, the production line what was wrong uh, with the manufacturing process just by hearing the sound that was being emitted or smell, uh, he was able to tell what's going on and what needs to be uh, repaired or stopped or fixed and he also recommended to the management that you know the machine wasn't able to create the under undercarriage of a car properly because of some technical issues important thing to have uh, to have an undercarriage that's uh, strong and sturdy so anyway management listened to him and gave more autonomy to the humans in creating that. So creates happy customers and a sturdy undercarriage. So Mitsuru didn't have any college degree. Uh, he went through the technical school of Toyota in Japan and uh, made a lot of changes from 60s. Even now he's on Toyota's website and the management has sort of elevated him, elevated him to an executive position. And he's been very much part of the process in which Toyota hasn't embraced as enthusiastically as perhaps some other manufacturers in uh, creating everything automatic. So uh, what Kevin is, was trying to illustrate is that a lot of uh, white collar workers these days also worry about computers coming in, taking away part of their jobs or all of their job. And now it's creating this uh, culture on productivity, on what can we do uh, to work more per efficiently. And, uh, and that's not necessarily a good thing. We don't need to worry about competing with computers. There are things we can do that still, at least in 2022, make us stand out from computers. Kevin talks about uh, head of AI at Facebook talking about artists and artisan coming ahead in this uh, revolution of the com information age that's taking on uh, instead of the programmers. And the point he tries to make is that you go to Amazon, you can find a Blu-ray DVD player for not 50 bucks. I couldn't find one for 50 bucks or $47 as uh, it is in US perhaps, because Kevin probably uses the uh, US version of Amazon, but Amazon.ca in Canada, the cheapest I can find a Blu-ray is 88 bucks, so $90. And the point Kevin wants, wanted to make is that a DVD is less than $100, a DVD player on Amazon in North America, and a ceramic bowl made by hand was $750. I haven't confirmed that on my own, but the point Kevin wants to make is that things where you leave your handprints, they are worth a lot more than the sophisticated machines that are a product of decades of accumulation of technology. So lots of stuff to take away from. Uh, it's not a long book. You know, you can read it may, even one rule a day. You can finish in nine days if you're very enthusiastic. You can do it on a weekend. If you're a very fast reader, which I'm not, then you can do it in a day. Uh, but I, I read it sh uh, slowly over the holidays and I finished it in January uh, 2022. And here we are uh, now in February 2022. And uh, I'm not going to go through all the rules, as I said, and I'll put a link in. Uh, lots of practical advice. Kevin had lots of practical advice in the book. For example, how he did the detox from his phone and uh, something he follows on Instagram. He says one of his favorite follows is uh, a account called the Nap Ministry that sort of is resisting this modern hustle culture of work, work, work. Find all the apps in the world to make you work and sleep little. So anyway, 
I recently follow, started following the NAP ministry, so not I don't know too much about it, but there are a lot of practical advice that Kevin had to share in the book. So highly recommend the book. And uh, if you guys enjoyed this sort of conversation or summary of what I thought is interesting about Future Proof and how it's not all doom and gloom, please like and subscribe uh, this channel. And I look forward to sharing more of these conversations as time goes on. Thank you.